Okay, welcome to the second video installment on electron configuration. What I'd like to do first is summarize what I talked about in the first video. First of all, we need to understand that the, that the electron uh, has some properties associated with it that um, make it difficult to conceptualize more or less uh, what its electronic structure is uh, around uh, the atom. First and foremost, the electron is very fast about 75% of the speed of light, and it's very, very small. It, it has a tendency to act more like a light wave than it does a particle. And lastly, it doesn't have a physical location that it lives in, um, in terms of the atom. It doesn't have a house, uh, it doesn't have a bedroom, it doesn't have a, f a physical place uh, where it exists. And these, these things conspire to make it rather difficult to conceptualize the condition of the electron uh, in the atom. But electron configuration is uh, a method that we use to understand the electron configuration of a basic atom. Now in the last video what I did was uh, to try and uh, gain a picture of what's going on is I suggested that we take uh, your parents and attach a GPS to them and then basically follow them around for a month and take that navigational information uh, and overlay it on a grid map of the Phoenix metropolitan area. So our school is located over here in Chandler and uh, presumably you live somewhere near where the school is. So we follow your parents around for a month and then we overlay the grid, the, uh, we overlay the map of Phoenix to see um, a, a scan of where they've been and what you would expect would happen is we, we would see some sort of a pattern because your parents more or less are going to be traveling close uh, to, to uh, where they live to, to do errands, uh, going to the store for food, going and getting gasoline for the car, going to the bookstore or whatever uh, in this area. Perhaps they work up in this area. So over the course of a month, we end up with a trace that, that looks like this. All right? This resembles the kind of pattern that you see regarding electrons, we could make the argument that this might represent the atomic orbital for a particular electron. There are basically four characteristics associated with this particular electron. First off, like was explained in the Bohr model, electrons have specific energy. So the electron that's responsible or, or the, the, the electron that is, that is operating within this orbital system is going to have a certain energy. The orbital itself is going to have a certain shape. It's also going to have an orientation. You can see in relative to this scan that it's bisecting a certain quadrant or certain quadrants on the grid system. It could have been pointed this way. It could be pointed this way. So the point is it, the orbital is going to have some kind of orientation. And then lastly, the electron has a spin either clockwise or counterclockwise. Now, how can we take this information and turn it into something that's useful? something that allows us to very quickly evaluate the electronic structure of an atom. This is a very important concept because electron configuration, the structure, the electronic structure of an atom, tells us a lot about the physical properties and the chemical properties of a particular atom and it's very useful too in terms of understanding the periodic table. So what I've done here is I've taken the standard electron configuration and, and pretty much overlaid it with the Bohr model. So we have our proton, hydrogen proton here, or since we're looking for a, ger a general method here to apply to any element, um, this could be um, a, a number of different protons. For example, if we were dealing with a sodium, at, uh, a sodium uh, atom, there would be 11 protons in this position. Now, as we move out to the first energy level, this is N1 defined by, by the red number, our electron configuration is going to be stated as being 1s. What this means is we, ha we, have our, we will have an electron in energy level 1, and energy level 1 is going to include an s orbital. And we learned in the last video that s orbitals are spherical, and they can hold two electrons. In the next energy level out, which is energy level 2, we see we're going to, to now have two different shapes of orb orbitals, an s orbital and a p orbital. So in energy level two, 
we're going to have the capacity to hold a total of eight electrons, two electrons in the 2s and six electrons in the p. Remember, the p orbitals are uh, or have the shape of, of lobes or, or barbells, and the p system holds a maximum of six. All right, energy level three is going to have s orbitals in it, p orbitals in it, and d orbitals for a maximum of 18 electrons. One of the interesting things you see here is that energy level 3 and energy level 4 overlap. So in the electron configuration, the configuration will go from 3s to 3p, and then we see that the, that the 4s orbital actually appears here, then followed by the 3d and then the 4p. Now, electron configuration goes well beyond the 4p orbital, and there are other orbitals that I haven't talked about um, beyond the d orbitals, but for our purposes we're going to stop here because um, the electron configuration starting with 1s and ending at 4p um, takes care of the first four periods of the periodic table and that's what my major concern is right now. Now the standard configuration is shown here. So we start at the 1s and we finish at the 4p for the first four periods of the periodic table. We're going to fill this configuration systematically starting at the lowest energy level and working up. We fill based on what a particular orbital can hold. So in other words, an s orbital always holds a maximum of two electrons. p orbitals hold a maximum of six and d orbitals hold a maximum of ten. Okay, so at the top of the page, I have, uh, um, I, I, once again, I'm showing the electron configuration. And what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to work together and we're going to write the configuration for the first 10 atoms. So we're going to start with hydrogen, whose atomic number is 1. The electron configuration will be 1s, and then because uh, hydrogen has one proton, the neutral atom also has one electron, and we show it by placing it in the 1s this way so that it's a superscript up and right, or another way of thinking about it, like an exponent. So hydrogen's electron configuration is 1s1. Moving across the period, moving across period 1, so we start with hydrogen, and on the right side of period 1 is helium. Helium has an atomic number of 2. That means it has two, two electrons. So its configuration is going to be 1s2. Now energy level 1 is filled. So now we're going to move back left across the periodic table to lithium, which is the beginning of period number 2. So we're going to be filling energy level 2 now. So lithium has three protons and therefore three electrons. So its configuration is going to be 1s2, 2, s1. We count the electrons to be certain we've used them up. One electron here and two there for three. The next element to the right is beryllium. It has four protons, which means it has four electrons for the neutral atom. Its configuration will be 1s2, 2s2. We look to check and see that we've used up all our electrons, two here and, and two in, in, the, in energy level one for a total of four. The next element to the right along period 2 is boron, atomic number 5. So the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. We see we have 3 electrons here and 2 here for a total of 5. The next uh, element to the right is carbon. All right, so 6 protons, we're going to have 6 electrons, so um, the configuration will be 1s2, 2s2. 2p2. We count 2, 4, 6, and we see we've used the electrons uh, that we started with. All right, so moving now to the right again, we come to nitrogen. It has an atomic number of 7. So its electron configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p. Okay, let's see what we got here. So 2 and 2 is 4. We got 3 to go. So the configuration for nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Note that in the p system, we can hold a maximum of 6, so we have room for 3 more electrons as we move to the right. So the next atom to the right 
is oxygen, atomic number 8. Its configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. 4 and 2 is 6, and 2 is 8. Okay, so we've used all our electrons here. And we see in our P system, now we have four electrons in it. We have two to go. So the next atom to the right is fluorine with an atomic number of 9. Its configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. We have room for one, one more electron. So we move to neon to the right, the very far right side of period 2. And we see... That, it, that neon has 10 protons, therefore 10 electrons. So the configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 for a grand total of 10 electrons. Now, before I go, I want to point out something. If we look back at where we started with hydrogen and helium, we were moving to go from hydrogen to helium, we were moving across period number one, left to right, and we see that at the end of period number one, that helium has a completely full energy level. Then we shifted to lithium back on the left side of the table, and we started crossing period number two. When we arrived at neon, we see that energy level two is now completely full. So this is an important um, aspect of electron configuration to, to realize as we move across any period on the periodic table, left to right. Number one, we're filling that energy level with electrons as we skip from one element to the next, left to right. Secondly, when we reach group 8A, the vertical column, moving left to right across uh, the period of, in question, that particular uh, electron configuration or energy level is completely full.